back to another video. This is Motivation Young Christians. Welcome back. Welcome back. Today we have a special guest, a special, very special guest with us. Can you introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Kimberly Cameron. I go to the Church of God of Prophecy located in Brooklyn, New York in Crown Heights. Um, in addition to that, I am also a licensed clinical social worker currently working at a large hospital as the assistant director of social work. And in addition to that, I have spent um, at least the last 15 years working both in ministry and in my career with young people, working with youth, youth who have medical and both uh, behavioral or mental health issues. Okay guys, that's, this is Sister Kim right there. She just explained exactly what she do. Today we're gonna to be covering the topic of depression. Since she's a social worker and she, this is in her field, I just decided that would be perfect for Sister Kim to do this video. We have a total of 12 questions to ask Sister Kim on the topic of depression. This video will be breaking up into two videos. This is part one. Next week, you're getting into part two and we're gonna dive right into the question. Question number one, Sister Kim, what is teen depression? Okay, so teen depression, um, like any other depression, is a serious mental illness that can cause disruption in activities of daily living. So that means if you are normally going to school, work, um, active in ministry, depression can cause a complete disruption in that. It is also much more than just being sad. Most people think, oh, it's just sadness. It is much more than that. It can have physical um, capabilities that can happen to your body, emotional distress that requires, depending on the level, um, some type of clinical intervention. Response, we're gonna be diving into question two. Question two is what are the symptoms of teen depression? Okay, so symptoms of teen depression. So first you have to look at that any teenager, anyone can possibly get depression, right? Depression is understandable whenever someone is exposed to any type of trauma, whether or not there's a loss in life, most people are going to experience some type of saddened mood. But a symptom that people should really be looking for is um, extreme pro prolonged sadness, a sense of hopelessness, withdrawing from friends and company, um, irregu irregularity in eating habits. So either you are extremely overeating or not eating at all. Sleeping habits, disruption in your sleep, either oversleeping or not really sleeping at all. For in teens, usually it's mostly oversleeping. Extreme irritability. So in teen depression, unlike with adults, adults, one of the things you see is them being more irritable and agitated, not necessarily your can't get up, can't get out of bed type of person. Um, what other symptoms should we be looking for? Physical issues. So whether that is joint pain, pain in your neck, pain in your back, um, stomach pain, um, loss of weight. Those are all things that can be caused, that can be symptoms of teen depression. Great response again, diving into question three. What are the risk factors slash trigger of teen depression? Risk factors. Um, for some people, there is some biological genetic component that research is still being um, looked at. A lot of times it is environment. So whether your mom, grandmother, aunt, somebody close to you um, suffers with depression or any other type of mental illness. Exposure to childhood trauma that makes it makes you more of a risk factor. Um, and also if you're around an environment where there's a lot of negative thinking. So if in if you are constantly thinking of things hopeless, glass half empty type of person, that makes it an even more risk factor. When you look at teenagers specifically, you have when you look at schools, you have bullying for anyone who is more prone to bullying or have been experienced or has experienced bullying. Um, I think I said trauma before, but trauma is like an extensive one. Anyone who's more isolated, anyone who's dealing with any type of peer pressure, those are more 
risk factors that you can think of more immediately that's easier, easier to be seen. But like I said, anyone can be prone to depression like any other medical illness. Not to mention environments that are like drug and alcohol, abusive system environments, those things are risk factors as well. A great response. Question five, how can a person recognize mm -hmm. that someone has depression? Okay, so specifically in a teen, one of the things you wanna look for is if they are withdrawing from anything they're interested or any type of pleasure. Oftentimes, teens will take a step back from things. Like, so star basketball player doesn't want to play basketball anymore. Not interested in doing things that they used to. Not necessarily, and may not be a person who just stops coming to school. They may come, but won't, won't be engaged. Um, what whether or not someone tells you that they're not sleeping well or they're overeating. Those are also things that you can look for a sign or if they're generally, um, the way they communicate have been different. If they're more withdrawn, that's usually the more popular one with teens is that they withdraw. Question six. No problem. What else can I do to either learn or like read about teen depression? Are there like websites, books? Yes, so there's websites. There's, there's, there's several books and there's books written um, by psychologists who have like reviewed teenagers who have been depressed and they're giving their perspective in terms of extreme depression. Um, I don't necessarily recommend that because it's more so for maybe a clinician or someone else who's trying to get a true understanding of what it felt like. But def definitely like the National Institute of Mental Health, that is a good website. They go into detail and actually have a very nice pamphlet that just bullet points key things for teen depression. So I would recommend that. No problem. So some ways you can manage and it, again, I'm going to stress, it really depends on the level and severity of the depression, because I don't want to advocate for people to manage it without medication if they truly, really need medication. But definitely, um, the things we tell us that that helps our physical body also helps out our mental health. So exercise, taking a walk, um, staying active. Uh, being around family and friends, engaging in things that you like to do, even if you're losing interest, kind of like pushing and forcing yourself to practice them so that you don't become isolated. And psychotherapy, which essentially is talk therapy with a licensed clinician who can help you work through your depression. This is the end of the video, guys. Just thank you so much for coming back if you haven't liked the video already like it if you're new subscribe turn your post notifications and this is motivation for young christians i'm out